Hi sisters, happy Easter. Um, yeah, I thought I'd do us another short audio just with, you know, Good Friday and Easter um, thoughts on the gospel. Um, but just before I start, actually, I was watching a cartoon with the kids um, and, you know, we're, we're the point where Pilate asks um, who he should re- release, Barabbas or Jesus. And the people choose Barabbas. And at that point, that hit me. Jesus is substituted, um, you know, substitutes Barabbas. Barabbas is a, a thief and a murderer and he deserves death. But Jesus dies in the place of Barabbas. Um, and that's just substitution. I'd never picked up on it until I was just watch, watching randomly watching Superbook cartoon with the kids. But, you know, food for thought there. You know, that's a prime example of Barabbas. Jesus dying in place of us that deserve the punishment. Jesus takes the punishment for us. Um, so, yeah, just, just think about that. Those are my musings on that. Um, but, yeah, so... A lot of my um, musings sort of, I, I went through all four Gospels, but Matthew's um, accounts was where I spent the most time on because Matthew 27 um, especially gives us some information that none of the other four Gospels give us, especially in terms of the crucifixion. Um, so I spent a bit of time on that and I'm also just going to sort of pick out points throughout all the four Gospels that correspond. But um, if we look at Matthew's Gospel, for starters, um, Matthew 27, um, and if we go to sort of verse 51, it says, At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tomb broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life they came out of the tombs and after Jesus's resurrection they went into the holy city and appeared to many people Um, verse 54 says the centurion um, and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened they were terrified and exclaimed surely he was the son of God many women were um were there watching from a distance they had followed jesus from galilee to care for his needs among them were mary magdalene um, mary the mother of james and joseph and the mother of zebedee's sons now if we just go back to sort of say um you know verse 51 the curtain um in the temple tearing into two um that sort of you know i think a lot of us are aware that you know when jesus died um, and the curtain turned into two, we get access to God. Um, the, the, the high priests who had been instated, you know, by, by in, the li- in, the, in the line of, of Levi, um, the high priests don't need to atone for the people's sins anymore because all of a sudden we can approach the throne of grace boldly in the name of Jesus Christ who has, you know, atoned for our sins you know that no other atonement no other sacrifices are needed because Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice um and so at that moment there is no difference between a Jew and a Gentile so before the Levites um the priests could offer sacrifices to atone for the sins of the Jews um but when Jesus comes and he dies he dies for all for all people he dies for Jews and Gentiles and so when the curtain is torn into two, um, Jews and Gentiles can approach the throne of God boldly through Jesus Christ. Um, you know, the, the Jews no longer need their priests, but no, neither do the Gentiles. All we need um, is to come in the name of Jesus, to be washed, um, washed clean in his blood. And, you know, that's so important. And I know, you know, obviously there's that... Um, significance there because you know that the priests are no longer needed but you know for the Jews they're no longer needed but it also gives us Gentiles it gives us access it means that we are all one um as the body of Christ we are all one and we can all approach the throne of grace um in the name of Jesus Christ he also says there that the earth shook um creation trembled when its maker died i mean so i can only imagine what you know what the father 
went through watching his son on that cross um, and as the creator succumbed to the to the weight of sin in the world creation groaned under that pain um, and it says here that tombs of holy people opened up and that you know I never really paid attention to that and isn't that amazing the tombs of holy people um, it says some versions say the tombs of saints but you have to imagine these are people that had um, holy people that had died before Jesus so their tombs opened and their bodies were raised to life they came alive with that first resurrection um, and if you want to think that some of these holy people would have been known in Jerusalem. So an earthquake happens, their tombs, which are obviously, you know, in, 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 in first century um, AD, the tombs were made of rocks. So the rocks split and they come to life. Now, if we are going from, you know, uh, um, if, we, if we're going to take the Jesus' resurrection as, as how people come back to life, they're coming back to life in body. Um, but they're not allowed to, you know, to come out of their tombs until after Jesus is resurrected because Jesus is the firstborn of the resurrection. He's the first one that is um, to rise again. So even though earth shook at the crucifixion and these people come alive, they're not allowed to, to leave the tomb until Jesus resurrects and Jesus leaves the tombs. So when Jesus resurrects, these holy people go back into Jerusalem. The significance of this is amazing. I mean, it says here the holy city, but the holy city is Jerusalem. You have to imagine this is where the temple of God had ha, had been. You know, this is the holiest of, of all the cities. Um, so these holy people who had quite clearly and quite openly believed in, in, in Jesus and in, and in God, they're brought back to life when the Messiah is brought back to life and what does God make them do? What did they do? They go back into the holy city where the, the curtains of the temple has just been torn into two. And so people that are seeing these holy people having been resurrected from the dead, that's a testimony. That's a testament to the Jews that the Messiah has come back to life because who has power over life and death? Jesus has power over life and death. Who can resurrect people full bodied from the dead? People that had died, you know, it doesn't say here how long, how long ago they had died, but you know, it does say here that many of them, so many of them came back to life and they went into Jerusalem, into the holy city where they would have, you know, been known. Um, and so all of a sudden people are seeing holy people that had died come back to life to testify to the fact that the Messiah is risen. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's just, I'd never really, that little bit of the of, of Matthew's gospel, I'd never really paid attention to it. But that's just a wonderful testimony. And of course, you know, when, and it, 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 it's, it's different, isn't it? Because you think when Jesus raised um, a centurion's daughter or he raises Lazarus, he doesn't raise them into eternal life. He, he raises them back to an earthly life, right? However, and they come back to an earthly life because Jesus is still alive on earth. So when he raises, for example, when he raises Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus comes alive, but Lazarus is to die again. When he raises the centurion's daughter from the dead, she's to die again. But these people that have been raised from the dead and are resurrecting after Jesus Christ has resurrected, after he has defeated death, after he has crushed death, these holy people that are being resurrected are being resurrected to eternal life, to eternal glory. Hallelujah. They are being resurrected to, 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 to a life of, of eternity with Christ in heaven. Isn't that just, I mean, what greater testimony did the Jews need that this was the son of God? Um, three days later, the holy people that, that had been, um, that had died were reappearing to people in the holy city, um, you know, as testament to the fact that the Messiah had just risen from the dead. Um, verse 54 here says, when the centurion um, and, the, and those who were with him guarding um, Jesus saw the earthquake, I mean, an earthquake is... I don't know if you've ever, know, you know, felt an earthquake, but it literally the earth is trembling. Um, 
they test, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. And isn't that amazing? That the first testimony at Jesus' death doesn't come from a Jew. It comes from a Gentile, the centurion, because he was a Roman centurion. So he was definitely not a Christian and he was definitely not a Jew. Isn't it just amazing that the first person to testify that Jesus was the son of God on while Jesus hung dying on the dead, on the cross, the first person to testify to who he is, is a Gentile. It was a centurion. And that, my sisters, is just cause for praise because it just shows that we are all in the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. We are all reborn into glory with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's just so amazing. Um, and so it goes on here to say that, you know, and, and all of the four gospel attest to the fact that the women watched from a distance. Everybody left, but all four gospels agree on the fact that women stayed back and watched from a distance they watched jesus die they watched the events from a distance women stayed on mary magdalene mary the mother of james it lists the women in all four accounts of the gospel how important are the women um you know jesus first appeared to women some of the gospel says he first appeared to, to mary magdalene but he first appeared to women women went to the tomb on on, on sunday morning because they prepared spices, they couldn't do anything on the Sabbath, which was the Saturday, um, 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 and, and, and Sunday was the first day of the week. Jesus was laid in a brand new tomb. Nobody had ever used that tomb before. On the first day of the week, which is the Sunday, the women woke up early. They had prepared spices to go and rub on his body. And when they get there, in, in one of the Gospels, it says that Jesus actually, Mary Magdalene mistakes Jesus for the gardener. Jesus appears to the women first. You know, isn't that just a glorious thing? That even though women, Eve, caused the fall of the world by listening to, to, to the serpents, that very, in, in that very first sin in the Garden of Eden. Isn't it just so wonderful that God brings us back full circle in his salvation plan? He uses a woman to bring, to bring Jesus into the world. And even when Jesus is dead, he appears to women first. Women are such an integral part of his ministry whilst he's here on earth. You know, the, um, they prepare his body. Um, you know, they look after him. Jesus, Jesus, you know, he speaks to women. He loves women. And so we are the very heart of everything that he does. He loves his mom. And, 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 and so... It just gives me just so much joy and so much comfort that in a world that can be so patriarchal and a world that is so, you know, sometimes women are dealt a, 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 a bitter hand sometimes in terms of career and jobs and, and, and most recently, as we've seen in the news, security. Um, it just gives me that much comfort to know that I am treasured by God and we have a special role to play in the world. Even though Eve caused the first fall, salvation came through a woman. Jesus first chose to appear to women. Isn't that amazing? And so, you know, th there's just so much in these Gospels that we can unpack. And I just chose a few points because there are just so many. Um, but I just want us to just be encouraged by all of these things. And another thing as well that just I picked up today, Joseph of, of, of Arimathea, um, you know, in, in Luke's gospel, Luke says he was part of the council. Um, let me find it. Let's see if I can, if I can find it. So Luke um, chapter 20, 24. Um, no, tell a lie. Luke 23 um, verse 50 onwards. It says, now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man. Who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea. And he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Isn't that amazing? He was part of the council. Even though he had not consented to their decision to crucify Jesus. And, 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 and to kill Jesus. He was part of that council. And so what did he do? 
he chose to do the right thing. Going to Pilate, this is verse 52, going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth and placed it in a tomb, cut into the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day and the Sabbath was to begin. And so even though he was a minority in the council, and sometimes when we're in some situations, we can be the minority and our lone voice might not carry weight. And, and, and those who are shouting the odds might get heard, even though, you know, their answers are wrong and their opinions are wrong. But we know that we are saying the right thing and we know that we are speaking the truth. And so we must always do the right thing, even if it means that we have to go back and correct ourselves, because Joseph sees this. He does not agree to the fact that Jesus should be killed, but he's a lone voice. But even after that, even after the crucifixion happens, Joseph does the right thing. He goes back to Pilate and boldly, some versions say, he boldly goes to Pilate. He was risking his life. He was a Jew. He was a high, you know, a high member, a high standing Jew in the community. He was part of the council, the Sanhedrin. What does he do? He, he doesn't care about his reputation. He doesn't care about how he's going to look. He doesn't care about his social standing. He doesn't care about the way he's going to look to the people and, and his fellow councilmen and his fellow high priests or chief priests. And what does he do? He boldly goes to, 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 to Pilate and asks for Jesus' body so he can bury it. He does the right thing because he knows that even though there's peer pressure and the tide, is, and the tide of opinion is against him, he chooses to do the upright thing. And so we must take an example from that and always do the right thing, even when we're in a minority. And sometimes it means going back on decisions that perhaps we had been part of, but, but the outcome was not the right outcome. But we need to go back and correct our mistakes. Let's do that. Let's go back and do the right thing. Because, you know, it's a matter of the heart. And sometimes that will cause you dishonour. It might cause you problems with your friends or at your workplace or your social circles. But let's always go back and do the right thing. Um, I just want to encourage us this Easter um, just to A, learn from Joseph um, and, 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 and just always, always do the right thing. Um, and B, take comfort from the fact that we as women play a central part to Jesus' life. Um, even when he died, you know, women stood afar and watched. We prepared the spices to go and, and rub on his body the very next day. And he appeared to us the first. So let us take comfort from the fact that we are a treasured species. We are loved. And even in a world where sometimes women are oppressed and, 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 and harassed sexually and, and, and there's domestic violence and there's all sorts of evil being committed against women. Let us take um, comfort in the fact that Jesus loves us. And we have a special part to play in salvation and the spreading of the good news and the spreading of the kingdom world down here on earth. We have a special part to play and let us play our word. We are the ones that, you know, he appears to the women first and he tells them, go tell my disciples that you have seen me and I am going to meet them in Galilee. Jesus has come to us and this is me. Go tell the rest of the world that you have seen me. That is the great commission of the resurrection. Jesus says, go make disciples of all nations. He appears to the women first and says, go tell my disciples. He has given us the mantle and said, this is it. Go tell the, go tell the rest of the world that you have seen me. Um, and, and, and make disciples of, of all nations. Um, hallelujah to God's holy name. That the, the, the mysteries of Easter are, is completely packed. Let us continue to unpack it um, this next week or this next week few days and, and I'm very much looking forward to um, any thoughts or any comments that anybody has to, to, to make on these things and yeah let's let's catch up soon. God bless you all. Have a happy Easter and speak to you soon.